There's a connection between appreciating yourself and appreciating and respecting time. People who appreciate themselves understand and respect the use of time. Here's what I call the best kept secret of the rich. Interesting discovery that I made one day. I couldn't believe it when I found out that rich people have about 24 hours a day. And poor people have about 24 hours a day. Wouldn't that drive you mad until you found out what the difference was? I'm telling you the difference is in the management of the time. A few simple disciplines practiced every day and your whole life can change. Your future can change, your income can change. But the rest of it is getting a handle on the management of time. And guess what? Discipline shows up again here, as it does everywhere. Discipline is also important in how you manage your time. The 24 hours given to you every day. Here's the first one. Ignore the subject. Ignore the subject. That's not a bad suggestion. Somebody says, well, I've been behind all my life. Doesn't look like that's going to change. Forget it. I like that approach. At least it's honest. Nobody's ideas of success and time management are right for you unless they can be applied by you. That it's important to resist all stereotypes for success, to resist all models of success. So here's one alternative to time management. Ignore the subject. Don't let somebody pressure you by saying, here's what you've got to do with your time. Resist all that. Take advice, but don't take orders. Let somebody give you their opinions and then accept the ones you want to accept. And the ones you don't want to accept, don't accept. Resist all attempts to pressure you into becoming the model of success. Resist all that. Do it on your own time, the time that's right for you. Now here's another alternative to time management. Step down to an easier task. Step down to something more manageable. Something that doesn't require that much time, that much effort. That's an alternative. Some people in sales are promoted to being manager. They say, oh, now I've got to be a manager. Heck with this, it takes 14 hours a day worrying about everybody. I'm getting back out in the field. Get my sales job back. And that's a good alternative. Somebody works for a company and says, oh, I'd love to own one of these companies. Then they find out what it takes to own one of those companies. What kind of pressure, what kind of hours. Can't play golf three days a week. And finally says, hey, you know, I've had it up to here with all the headaches and trauma and dealing with all these people's lives and running a company and being responsible for all the stuff. I'm going to step down. And that's a good alternative. It really is. Don't let yourself be pressured when stepping down might give you a better lifestyle. You've got to have time for your family. I went for some things that cost me too much in those early days. If I'd known how much it was going to cost, I never would have paid the price. So you've got to weigh the consequences, how to make everything fit. Sometimes that extra money isn't worth it. If it pressures you into losing touch with somebody you really care about, so family must be considered here as well. But here's the best alternative to time management, and that's to get more out of you. If we just get more from ourselves, we can make an hour as valuable as 10 hours used to be. We can get as much done now in a day as we used to get done in a week. Efficiency, skills, knowledge, awareness, practice, getting better, all of that value we can bring to the marketplace, bring to the job, and that's where the real time management comes in. I found out that a normal day is enough time. Eight hours, ten hours, five days, six days. That's enough time. The rest of it now has got to be the best use of that time. There's a movement going on now in the workplace. The movement is people setting up home offices telecommuting to work. 
working at home and communicating with the office through fax machines and computers and modems and delivery services. People are even starting to work in one state and live in another. They don't need to be at the office all the time. For some jobs, they don't need to be at the office at all. And guess what some of these folks find out? The projects that used to take two days, they get done in a few hours. Why? Because they have no distractions. No people stopping by their office to chat. No unsolicited phone calls to take. No unexpected visitors to deal with. When they work, they work. When they play, they play. Now, not everybody has the luxury of having a job that can work like this. But maybe some of the same principles can be applied at the office. Like, do not disturb times. Like scheduling your day so that you're totally undisturbed during those hours in which you complete your best work. Like setting certain hours each day to take appointments and phone calls. And that's really where the magic of personal development comes in. Knowing who you are, becoming more valuable, being more valuable, knowing the value of your rhythms in getting certain tasks done. Getting things done more efficiently in a shorter period of time. Working smarter, not harder. Number one, you run the day or it runs you. Part of the key to time management is just staying in charge. But here's what usually happens. We start something and we're in control. But as time starts to unfold, pretty soon we start losing control. You know, you start a business and you're running it. And pretty soon, what? It's running you. You have to stop every once in a while and say, hold it, hold it. Who's in charge here? So here's a good phrase to jot down. Something will master and something will serve. That's the nature of life. That's just how it goes on this spinning planet of ours. Something will master and something will serve. And here's what you have to make sure you become. The master. You run the day. You run the business, you run the enterprise, you run the job, you stay in charge. Now here's how you can stay in charge. Have your written set of goals with you at all times. Then prioritize your goals and decide which is important. Then constantly review your goals. Then have your goals match up to a good written game plan. The game plan that says, take it out of your head and put it down on paper. Then with game plan in hand, try to separate the majors from the minors. The really important things from the things you just have to do. And prioritize. Is this a major day or a minor day? And adjust your time accordingly. Is this a major conversation or a minor conversation? A lot of people don't do well and here's why. They major in minor things. They spend too much time on things that don't count and too little time on things that should count. So you're about to pick up the phone and make a call. But before you do, decide, is this a major call? Is this a minor call? If it's a major call, it needs a little preparation. If it's a minor call, a few pleasantries will probably do. Hi, how are you? So a little evaluation will save you a lot of time. Major, minor. Next time management essential, don't mistake movement for achievement. You probably know some people around you who are just plain busy being busy. You've got to be busy being productive. It's easy to get faked out by being busy. Guy comes home at night, flops down in the easy chair, says I've been going, going, going. But the real question is doing what? I mean, it's the doing what? That's the real key. Not the going, going, going. Some people are going, 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 doing figure eights. They're not making much progress. Don't mistake movement for achievement. Evaluate the hours in your days and see if there's not a lot of wasted time in there that you could manage better. Do more with. The next key to good time management is good concentration focus. You've just got to zero in on the job at hand. Concentrate. 
Don't start your business day until you get to the business. I used to start my business day in the shower. Found out it doesn't work. Wait till you get to the office to start your work. Wait until you get to work before you get to the work. Don't start your business day at the breakfast table. It's not good for the family. Here's another one. On the way to work, don't think about work. Here's what you've got to do. On the way to work, concentrate on the way. The breakfast table, concentrate on the family. Wherever you are, be there. Don't be somewhere else. Give whatever you're doing the gift of attention. Give people the gift of attention, the gift of attention, concentration. Next time management essential, learn to say no. Boy, it's easy in a social society to just say yes, yes, yes too much, over obligate yourself. Then it takes all those phone calls and all that time to back out of it and redo it. Don't say yes too quickly. Better to say, I don't know if I can make it but I'll give you a call. Better to say you don't know than to say yes, yes, yes too quickly, trying to be nice and then having to back out. One of my colleagues has a good saying, don't let your mouth overload your back. Committing too soon, too quick. Being too eager to please. Appreciate yourself, your time, appreciate your own limits. Know when your commitment to someone else will end up taking time away from yourself and from your family. Have self-appreciation for your special time alone and with those you love and those who love you. You can't immediately say yes to offers that sound prestigious. You can't immediately say yes to social functions. You've got to say maybe and take time to evaluate what's an important contribution to society and what'll just take time away from your ambitions and your family. Be eager to please yourself and your family. Don't be so eager to please everybody else. Appreciate your own limits. You don't have to fill up every second of the day. Take time to appreciate what you've accomplished. Take time to enjoy the fruits of your labor. Your success should be a pleasure Appreciating what you've got and what you've done and who you've become is important. It's an important component in fueling your future achievements. Just knowing that you've accomplished in one day what you laid out in your game plan. Just knowing that you finished all you started out to do that day. That's encouraging. And it's these little daily advantages that you're gaining that continue to fuel your achievements. Little achievements are just as important as big achievements. Why? Because you can't appreciate the big achievements without first appreciating the little ones. I'm almost speechless! What an awesome hit! Congratulations!